Hey, mom and dad, extreme kids. Well, it's week three. What we've learned over these last three weeks is God, God created everything for his glory and he put man in that creation, specifically in a place that was specifically made for them called the Garden of Eden, a home where God dwelt and walked with Adam and Eve for most of their lives while they were in the garden until one really particular day. We're going to talk about that day today. And that day was the day that Adam and Eve disobeyed. So Ethan is going to share a little bit about what did God command Adam and Eve to do. And then when we get back, I'm going to share with you a little bit of what they did and what God said would happen. And verse 15 says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may friendly, freely eat. But but of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Thank you, Ethan, for reading that scripture. Now, here's what happened. So God had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day they eat of it, they will surely die. Well, part of the story that I'm going to share with you today concerning the fall was they were in the garden together, husband and wife, Adam and Eve, and they came upon the tree. And they came upon a serpent in the tree. That serpent's name was Satan. And he had challenged Eve. And he said, did God really say you should not eat from any tree in the garden? That's not really what God said. What, what God really said was, don't eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Well, what happened within the conversation is, Eve was deceived. She was tricked and she ate because she saw that the fruit was good to the eye and it smelled good and even tastes good. So she ate. And then the Bible says that she gave to her husband who was with her and he also ate. They ate what? They ate the tree. They ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They ate the fruit that God said, do not eat. They disobeyed. Wow. Because of one man's disobedience, every single person since then has been born in that very nature, that rebellious nature of sin. That's called sin. When we disobey God, that is called sin. And this is what it says. It says that after they eat of the tree, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the fruit, it says, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were ashamed. And they, so they took fig leaves together and they made for themselves coverings. Coverings of what? Well, coverings to cover their shame. They thought that if they can cover the physical parts of their body, that that would take away the shame or the guilt that they had before God. That doesn't work that way, does it? How can you and I change our shame? Well, there was a promise given. And that promise is what we're going to be celebrating next week. Let me share that promise with you. So God says something to the snake. What's he say to the snake? Well, he says something to the snake that is so, so impactful within the universe that things started really shaking. Do you like shaking? God likes to shake things up. And that's what he did here. This is what he said to the serpent. He said, I will put an enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. 
what's that? What's an enmity? An enmity is something that really can be an irritant, something that really gets on your nerves. It's like every time you try to deal with it, it never goes away. God would do, would do that. Yeah, God did that. He did that, to, he did that to the snake, to Satan. And what is the enmity? Well, the enmity or the irritant was Jesus. Jesus was the promise that he would make all things new. He would make all things right. All the things that Adam and Eve had done, the sin that Adam and Eve had committed, the disobedience, God was going to make it right through his son, Jesus. Now, we know thousands of years later, Jesus was born. He was born of a virgin called Mary. He grew up, became a man, and eventually he was declared guilty for something he did not do. He was completely innocent. He had no sin. He was the perfect lamb of God. And as a result, that perfect lamb of God became the covering of our shame. The blood of Jesus cleanses us and takes away all our shame, takes away all our sin, the Bible says. That's pretty amazing. Sin is gone. When we accept Jesus, we're made right with God. We can be in relationship with him because of one promise. Yes, that promise. And next week, we're going to talk about that promise at Easter Sunday, which we call Resurrection Sunday. So stay tuned for next week. Now, mom and dad, there are a couple of things I want you guys to know. First, we're going to be doing communion this, um, this morning in our church service at 9 and 11. So what I'd like you to do, get some bread, get some juice, bring it in for the whole family before the service starts. And then when it's time to do our communion, you, we will do it together. Now, I know it's virtual, and it's not really the same as if we were together, but we need to do it as a reminder and a remembrance of what Christ did and his, his, his soon return. So I want you to be excited about that. The second thing is, I want you guys, if you can, get ready for next week. Because mom and dad, I'm challenging you to have a fun activity with your kids and a great way for them to learn scripture and also learn to seek and find. We have to seek God with all of our heart, the Bible says. So this is a great way for them to learn to seek. So what I'd like you to do is either go out and buy some plastic eggs or stop by the church and pick them up or even cut them out. Cut out a book, like a little tiny egg that you can fold in half. And in that egg, you will write a scripture. And I wanna encourage you, I'll give you a list of scriptures um, on Facebook. If you write those scriptures in each egg, place them around. And then make sure that the most special egg, the egg of the gospel, right, is somewhere in the house so that they can find that too. Because we have to find and desire God's word. Now, if whatever child finds that scripture, give them a special treat. But every egg that's found, mom and dad, you also want to make sure that you reward them because God rewards us when we seek him with all of our heart, the Bible says. Really important. Okay? So have a blessed day. Stay sanitized. Wash your hands. And God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Have fun with the craft with Miss Tammy today. And also there's a special game that you can play called the hide and seek game. Enjoy it. And we will soon talk again. God bless you.